today we're going to convert the tachometer in my Rover P6 3500, which is a V8 engine, from an RVI type tachometer to an RVC type tachometer. And this is because I put electronic ignition and removed the points ignition, and it basically the tach just reads 6,000 RPMs all the time now. So I bought this kit online from Spieda. Um, I think it was about 44 pounds, which is about $55, $60. Uh, comes with a new board. Also has the uh, cables because you have to plug it into your laptop to um, calibrate it. So I've got a cable for that, and I bought a piece of wire white with a black stripe that runs from the new board to the uh, negative side of the coil which I'll need to run in the car. Now here's the dashboard. I'm going to have to get the tachometer, which is that one, out of here, which means we need to remove this end plate, which by taking these two knobs off and then these mill nuts, I have to take this piece of trim off and then there's four screws holding the dashboard in. And here's the two big flathead nuts or screws and same thing on this side top and bottom and that'll remove the clear plastic face. So here's the clear plastic face removed. You can see just those four larger screws. They're the weird looking ones with the uh, springs and the shoulders and this is held in by three screws, one here, one back there, and one over here somewhere. And I think if I take those out, I can take that out without pulling the, the dash out. Because not that it's that much harder to pull the rest of the dash out, but there's a lot of connections and then you gotta deal with all the speedometer cable and the odometer reset cable and all the rest. So if I can do it without that we're gonna well Sorry, I forgot to take pictures of this, but basically used a couple of popsicle sticks to pry the needle off. And once that's off, there's two small black screws here and here. These are them there. They're just flatheads. That lifts this off the face, which leaves you looking at this. And there's four slotted screws in this. You remove those four slotted screws, pull the uh, piece of aluminum off, that's just the light shield, and then there's four screws in the back, two brass ones that are holding the uh, assembly in, and then there's two more steel ones here and there that are part of the, um, well I guess it's all four of them hold the whole assembly in there. And then that's the back plate. And then this pulls out. It does, this tends to stick into the housing because there's a rubber, piece of rubber there uh, as a seal. And the stuff, they've been together so long you have to give them a little push, but they'll come right apart. And after that, it's time to follow the directions in the manual with the came with the uh, kit. Is this. So this silver screw and that silver screw are what mount the PC board to the uh, mechanism. So those have to come out. Next it says to desolder the two wires that connect the board to the coil. That's this red wire and this black wire. And you're going to need to desolder them from here from the board because you're going to want these wires when you reconnect. This is the actual motor for the tack. So you're going to need those. So. Next will be to unsolder these two wires. So next it says to remove, to desolder the power in wire, which is this yellow one, which is, this is the power in terminal right here. We're going to reuse this piece, so we're going to desolder it from the board. And then lastly, these two wires are just pushed into those two notches, so we pulled those out. So now we have, these are the old PC board, this is the back plate, this is the actual tack drive mechanism. Oh, my mistake. The board has three new, the two wires for the drive, one power 
wire coming in so these wires should be disconnected from this end and let's get it off of that pin too. So we've mounted the new board with the two original mounting screws, these are the two aluminum ones and it goes with the wires facing out. And also notice that this, much as this looks crooked, this is the tension adjustment for the springs for the return on the needle so you don't want to mess with that. So next we're going to put the two small wires onto here and we're also going to, this is the power wire, it's going to go to there. So first we're going to tin them, so a little flux on them, a little solder, and then when I took them off, these are crossed, so I'm going to put them across again. It, the instructions don't say, it just said put them on, see if it goes in the right direction or not. So 50-50 uh, chance, which probably means it's an 80% chance you're going to do it wrong the first time. So the instructions say to assemble it and then to connect your test lead to the right hand terminal of the four, that's the uh, lowest input level. Trouble is that with this in place there's not any real easy way to do that so I just soldered a temporary lead on there. Mine I'm actually going to use the far left connection because I have a high voltage coil. So I'm just going to leave that in there but as you can see I've cut off the bare wires, folded them over, taped them up so if I do need to go back and recalibrate at some point, I won't have to take it all apart. But you can see where it's just soldered onto that fourth lug. Um, so the calibration was pretty straightforward. Uh, I tried it at a few different RPMs. Um, they were all a little bit off. Of course, this is an old tack too. But I set it at 4500 because uh, that's about where it shifts. Uh, maxed out anyway, and I'd rather it be accurate at 4,000 to 5,000 RPMs than it would be being super accurate at 1,000 RPMs. So that's where I'm at. So I still need to tuck this wire in and then put the light blocker back on, and that's an insulator. And then I'll need to wire the car up. This was the old board. I did cut the uh, there's a white wire that looped through here a couple of times and it had the male and female connectors. So I've soldered one onto my new wire, uh, the male end and the female end. I mounted back in the tack so I'll be able to plug it in and out. And that's the power connection on the back, that's that spade terminal. So I had to loosen the rest of the dashboard up to get behind to get the wires. So didn't take it all the way out, just took the, the bolts out. And then I ran a white and black wire, which is the sensor wire, to the negative side of the coil. So that's just down there and through an existing hole in the firewall. And then power I brought up. Oh, you can't see it, but there's a relay in the back of the glove compartment for the air conditioning that has a switched power on it. So I hooked into there. So there, there. Those are my two wires, power, sensor. And uh, this guy put it all back together again. Well, I got it all back together and checked it with my uh, timing light. My timing light has a digital tachometer in it. Seems to be pretty accurate. I um, actually set it at 3500, so I know that that's right. Um, I've driven it around a bit, works really good. Really pretty happy. I did run a separate power supply up out of this car's air conditioning, so there's a relay for the air conditioner just down in here so I grab the power supply that goes to the switching part of the relay which is on the key to power up the tack. It was an original power line but it's part of the coil feed circuit and they said there might be uh, interference which from the circuit constantly changing uh, amperage from the uh, coil firing. Here, I'll let you see it. There we go. So, it's in fast idle because I just, yeah, I haven't run the car yet today. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.